All right, I've got to read on. I got to know what happens. Chapter 11. Chapter 11 has a weird um, title name. It's called um, Arethazon Dorsitum. I don't know. We'll find out. Chapter 11. In the obscure murk of this log's interior, Poppy crouched, and ten crouched tensely. Slouching slowly out of the dark came a flat-faced beast with a blunt black snout and and fierce um, grizzled whiskers. Its eyes were heavy la laden as though it had just awakened. The creature moved ponderously with a waddle and a rattle. Its stench was powerful enough to make Poppy um, clamp a paw over her nose. Its stench, meaning it smelled. The moment the animal caught sight of her, it came to a clumsy stop and blinked. What in the bee's hive are you doing here, furball? It snarled at her. Puppy wished that she knew what kind of animal she was facing. She could only whisper, It's just me, sir. The name is Erith. The animal snapped. Erith is on disordum, or disortum, sorry. But I just get called Erith. What's more, I'm a grump, and you just woke me up. So don't try to slick me down with some slug slop. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry I woke you, Mr. Erith, Poppy said. What are those things on your head? The beast growled. Are those flat balloons or ears? And the name is... Aerith, E-R-E-T-H, and stop your barking. Please, Aerith, it's not me barking. Then who in the frog flip is making that racket? It's a fox, sir. It's a fox at the entrance to this log. Ugh, is this some um, sordid friend of yours? No, sir, it's not my friend. Well... What in the beetle bit, bit are you anyways? Aerith demanded. You're so small that I can hardly see you. Sir, I'm a deer mouse. I'm a girl deer mouse. I didn't ask what you are. I don't really give a bug's bathwater about you, and I asked for your name. Sorry, sir. My name is Poppy. Poppy? What kind of an idiotic name is that? Please, sir. It's a family tradition. We're named after flowers or fruits. Erethazon dorsatum is my name, Latin name. But you kids don't learn Latin anymore, do you? Sir, I don't really know what Latin is. I mean, Mr. Aerith. The beast sniffed loudly. The whole forest is full of um, idiots like that fox. During this conversation, the fox had continued to bark and whine, occasionally even digging furiously at the log entrance. He wanted to get Poppy. Pop, fop, sop, Earth cried, or whatever your name is, would you please tell that fox to be quiet? My name, sir, is Poppy, and if I tell him, I don't think he will. Why not? Sir, he wants to eat me, Poppy said faintly. Eat you? Yes, sir. Oh, that's terrible, er, um, Era said scornfully. But then all meat eaters, they're terrible. Ever notice that? Here's where, where they were. Oh my gosh, and look what he is. Okay, you're going to laugh at this. It's a long picture. Let me get it. I'm going to scan it that you can see both ends of the log. Friends, are you laughing right now? That's so funny. He said, all meat eaters are terrible. Ever notice that? I mean, did you ever meet a meat eater who wasn't loud or aggressive? Did you? Never mind. Just get out of here. Please leave me alone. I can't, Poppy cried. 
Why on earth can't you? I just told you, Poppy pleaded. If I go out there, he'll eat me. Look here, Aerith cried. Whatever your name is, I can't remember. But don't you have any guts? Please, sir, my name is Poppy. Oh, Weasel Wonk, I really don't care what it is. All I'm saying is, if a creature um, can't take care of himself, then he has no business sneaking into my house, waking up an old coot like, like me in the middle of the day and asking for my help. Sir, I never really asked for your help, an exasperated Poppy replied. Can't you understand anything? The fox chased me. Do you think I really like being in here? I don't. It stinks. Aerith blinked. Oh, all right, he growled. I suppose I better talk some sense into that meat mauler. Just get out of my way, he snarled as he began to waddle forward. It's your lookout, not mine, if you get pricked by one of my quills. Puppy's heart clenched. Did, did, did you say quills? She stammered. Of course I said quills. Well, yes, but, but, but what? Poppy was dizzy with fear. Her knees shook. She found it hard to swallow. Are, are you, sir? Are you, what are you? Don't you have eyes, Ear screeched, or are those spots on your face buttons? I'm a porcupine. Porcupine? The word turned Poppy numb. She could hardly breathe. She could hardly think. Floppy, Poppy, Earth bellowed. Will you please get um, yourself out of my way? Poppy dived against the pulpy wall of the log and squeezed herself flat to give Earth room. Even so, as the porcupine waddled by, his quills raked across his belly like a rusty crumb. Never, despite all she had confronted, had Poppy been so terrified. Think now what you know about what she's been told and what she knows, all she knows. Aerith, however, continued to make his ponderous way towards the log's entrance, where the fox was still barking and still yelping and still digging. Poppy felt sure that once that fox was disposed of, the prickly monster would surely turn on her. First, he would shoot her with one of the quills. Next, he would stab her. Then he would skewer her. And finally, he would chomp her into tiny bits and eat her. For a moment, Poppy considered offering herself to the fox. If the choice was between, between being swallowed in one gulp or being tortured by the porcupines, surely the fox would be more preferable to her. Poppy stared into the darkness of the log. Perhaps maybe there was an escape hole. But frozen in the terror of her predicament, she could not move. Instead, her eyes turned towards the entrance. Certainly, she was about to witness the most ghastly carnage. Sure enough, when Aaron reached the log opening, Poppy heard him screech, Fox! You brain bag of bones! What's all this hullabaloo? Can't an old creature get some quiet in his own home? I'm sorry, Aerith, Fox returned in a voice that was at best sniveling. I didn't know you were in here. Just trying to grab a mouse who ran into the, um, your place, a snack. Nothing more, not trying to bother you, sir, not, no harm meant, just a, mi a midday nibble. Don't nag me about your nibbles, you nitwit, Nareth bellowed. Again, friends, figure of language. Don't nag me about your nibbles, you nitwit. What kind of for, um, figurative language is that? Aerith bellowed. When I say get lost, I mean do it. Now, get lost. Now, Aerith, let's be... Fox did not finish his sentence. Instead, Poppy heard Aerith cry, I said, get, um, get Broomtail. Get out. This order was followed by a whack and a yelp of pain and a frantic scramble of claws concluded with a barking and whining that grew faint um, as it ran away with amazing rap, um, rapidity, rapid rapidity. 
Poppy was sure that that fox was being devoured, but more frightening still, she saw the porcupine um, wheel about and start to waddle back into the log towards her direction. Poppy panicked. She turned and fled toward her one hope of escape, the log's other end. The farther the log, the log Poppy went, the more foul smelling it became. Worse, she had increased difficulty seeing where she was going. Sure enough, she slammed into the log's far end. There was no escape hole. Stunned and unsteady on her feet, heart beating so loud that she was sure it would burst, terrified, top, um, terrified Poppy turned to confront the porcupine. Her one remaining hope was to try to slip by the beast. The Poppy knew that she risked um, a severe shredding she was certain this way would be her only chance. Slop, pop, or bebop, the porcupine called. Where the snake sweat are you? Come out, come out of there. Gasping for breath, Poppy braced herself against the rear of the wall of the log, ready to bolt, ready to die. Ira's face grinned hideously, loomed out of the dark at her. Poppy, he called. Um, you, you have no excuse to, um, why the devil are you hiding in my, oh dear, in my toilet? I don't know why it said that, but we'll find out. And that's the end of the chapter.